Kathleen, the host of the Kathleen Wells Show. I'm delighted to join you this afternoon. I've had this show for, what, three and a half years? And in that time, we have, we have observed, we have analyzed, we have thought about the political system. I spent most of my time talking about the political system. And, in fact, we had the, we, we had the midterm elections yesterday. We see the results today. And I'm curious as to what people think about them. So it's like this cycle. Everything is just this, we're in this cycle, this repetition of, how do I explain it? It's like nothing ever changes. I couldn't believe that they were talking about uh, the, there was voter fraud in Florida. I mean, weren't we talking about voter fraud in Florida eight years ago? So why are we still talking about it eight years later? My guest today, Neely Fuller, Jr., he was on last week. He's on again this week because I want to examine this issue of racism slash white supremacy, this issue of justice, this issue of peace a little further. In fact, today we're going to devote the show to what black people should do and what they should not do, the do's and don'ts for blacks in America. I'm delighted to have Neely Fuller. He is the author of the United Independent Compensatory Code slash System slash Concept. This book is a compensatory counter-racist codified word guide. It's a word guide, and it's, it's a word guide that presents tools, words, words are tools, um, in this compensatory counter-racist word guide that specifically that are specifically intended to assist the user in thinking, speaking, and are acting in a manner that best helps the process of replacing the system of white supremacy slash racism with a system of justice, a balance between people. So the question for listeners today is, do we feel observing reality, observing the political process, observing life, do we feel that black and brown people have received justice in America? That's the question that I'm posing to my listeners today. I also want to mention, as a side note, that this program will be re-aired on the Progressive Voices channel on Sunday at 8 p.m. That's 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 p.m. on the East Coast. So all my programs are re-aired on the Progressive Voices channel at 8 p.m., 11 p.m. on the East Coast. and you can check out the Progressive Voices channel at www.progressivevoices.com. Well, Neely Fuller, thank you for joining me again on the Kathleen Wells Show. Thank you for inviting me. Well, we, well, before we get in, dig into this issue about what black people should do or should not do, uh, did you? I want to ask you, did you observe the results from the midterm elections this morning? Did you observe those results? I observed some of them. And give give me your thoughts about them. Well, it's another election, and uh, people usually go to the polls and try to elect people who are going to do the things that they want done. That's the whole point in going. So the question is, will those things be done, whatever they are? But I say the first order of business is that everybody should be very well focused on what it is they want done, why they want it done, and what they expect the results to be. And I don't uh, think the American people are clear on what they want done, are they? Well, then you have what they call confusion. And any time you have confusion, ugly things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that might be the result of this election. Ugly things are going to happen because you have confusion. And you know, and that's, if people, if it is true that people are confused, you 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 can't get it. Most confusion, if it doesn't lead to people raising questions, that will get rid of confusion because that's the way you get rid of confusion through the process of questions and answers. In fact, that's the way you solve all problems through the process of questions and answers. But if people are satisfied with being confused or they don't know that they're confused and they are, then you'll just have more of the same. Confusion breeds confusion. It just keeps going. It doesn't stop. 
until somebody deconfuses the situation. And in order to deconfuse any situation, you have to have focus and clarity. Focus and clarity. That's one thing that I judge myself on even when I'm on a program like this. Not so much whether or not I'm correct or incorrect, because on the problem I'm trying to solve, I really don't know the answer as to whether I'm correct or incorrect. But I do judge myself on whether or not I made things clear that I was trying to say and that I stayed focused. Sometimes I do better than others. I've never done as well as I should. Well, one of the things that you're the author of the United Independent Compensatory Code slash System slash Concept, and one of the things you mention in this book, and I I recommend this book highly, you talk about the importance of words, the importance of words. Words are tools. And you say, you write, the evidence so far shows that no words or combination of words have yet been invented and used in a manner that has resulted in the establishment of peace. Again, that is what words should do, motivate people to produce peace. Elaborate on that. Yes. Uh, first of all, in order to have peace, you have to have clarity and focus on one thing, and that is to start with. There's three things, and you start with one thing, truth. you got to have the truth. If you start off with a false premise uh, or you make, errors along the way, I mean, you don't repair the errors, then you don't have the truth. You have to find out the truth. What is truth? Truth is that which is. Is what? That which is whatever it is. In other words, calling things by the correct names so that you have clarity and focus and you don't have that confusion. Confusion is a no-no. Okay, then once you the equation would be, the compensatory equation, the logical equation would be truth, the revelation of truth, plus justice. And what is justice? Justice, according to what I've written, I had to make up a compensatory definition for it because there's no official definition for the word justice, or legal definition anyway. So I came up with a term that I think will hold up until I find one better. Uh, a definition, compensatory definition, justice is two parts. Guaranteeing that no person is mistreated, that's part one. Part two, guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. Then you go to number three, which is correctness. Now, correctness is what? It's balance between people and things. Balance between people and other people, and the things that people come in contact with, the trees, the air, the water, the fish in the water, uh, the animals that roam the earth, the grass that grows, the seasons. People must be in some type of harmony in their conduct, in their behavior with these elements. Otherwise, it's going to throw them out of balance and they, in turn, will be out of balance with each other, which is what has been happening all over this globe. So you have to have the equation in summation of truth plus justice plus correctness, and that theoretically would equal this thing called peace. We don't know what that's like because, as far as we know, that's never existed anywhere. Exactly. Not among so the then people the question on the planet now for sure. Exact so the question then becomes why is man here? What is his purpose? Now now we got it. What the, the, uh, the in answer to that question, the compensatory answer that I advance, we're here to solve problems. What problems? All problems that will have to be solved in order to lead to peace. Which means truth, revealing truth plus justice, which means getting that thing the way it ought to be between people, which is nowhere near that, and getting people in harmony with their environment and pulling it into uh, their environment in, in, uh, so that they will be in harmony in the correct manner with each other and with the environment. And then you will have peace. Well, you That's know, what people say that they want. 
but people don't do anything toward getting it. For one thing, we glorify what? Destruction. Yeah. And violence. Yes, we just say I got through having what? What's the last holiday we had? Halloween. There you go. What is that about? Scaring people. That's not anything to teach anybody. Mm-hmm. We don't think about these things. Mm-hmm. That needs to be reviewed all together mm-hmm. and thrown out according to what? Neely Fuller? No, according to logic. If you want to make peace, yeah. you, don't have, you don't go around having goblins and whatnot and I mean, teach young people at an early age to hide themselves, disguise themselves behind masks and all like that. And then terrify people. Well, that's what you do when you get ready to carjack somebody, which is exactly what the child would be doing when he grows up. Why? That seed was planted early in what we might call an innocent setting. We need to think critically and seriously about every move that we make, not just some moves, because every move that every creature makes on this planet is going to have a constructive effect or a non-constructive effect. There's no such thing as in between. Every move that you make, even just walking across a room and changing chairs, is going to have a constructive effect or a non-constructive effect. There are no, no, no exceptions to that law Mm -hmm. of the universe. You know, the universe, when I think of the universe, I think of since time immemorial, man has been at war. He has been engaged in war, I should say, with forever. There has never been a time when there has been peace throughout the land, throughout the planet. Yes. That's true, which is why you have the mess that you have. And you can expect to have more, as long as we don't change the culture of the entire people of this entire planet. And the system of white supremacy does nothing but throw gasoline on the fire. That's all they have done, and done it in a most expert way, a most sophisticated way. It's just the latest form of making a mess out of people that has come down the pike in the history of the universe. This thing called racism. Because of what is it really all about? Mistreating people based on color. Which right there, that's a premise. A false premise. That's a premise that's based on destruction. Oh, they'll make it look like you get a lot of of uh, uh, benefits from it, and you do. The system of white supremacy is uh, very constructive when it comes to material things. Mm-hmm. You can produce a lot of material things out of the system of white supremacy, lots of it. The most advanced period, you might say, scientifically, in the world has come during the system, the advent, the invention of the system of white supremacy. Racism, mistreating people based on color, is a form of royalism, and it's the most successful form of royalism. But you might say, well, since it's so successful and produces so many things, so many creature comforts and all like that, uh, transportation, communication is better than ever, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No, the de- the devices, the instruments of communication are better than ever. But what are people communicating when they say things to each other? Look at the content of these so-called communications. All that's done is help people to go at each other in a more efficient manner. When people travel, they get there faster. But when they arrive, what do they do? The same old things they were doing a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand, I guess, years ago start slaughtering each other. They got there faster to the battlefield. That's all that happened. In the old days, they got there slower. It took them forever to get there. Now, with the technology under white supremacy, 
you get there faster. And then you glorify the people who were slaughtered. How much sense does that make? Everything in counter-racist science, everything in compensatory science, compensatory means making up for what's missing. And what's missing is truth, justice, and correctness, and peace. Mm -hmm. That's what's missing. And to me, when I listen to you, what I'm understanding is that you're asking for harmony between people and between people and things. And when I Absolutely. Think... You have to have that. That is, that, that is according to what? Neely Fuller? No. It's according to logic. Always ask people. Don't ever believe anything that Neely Fuller says. Period. Never. Nothing that he says. Don't believe it. Don't take it and run with it. Check it out for yourself. Do a little reasoning on your own. And more than anything, just walk around on this planet and observe and see if you see what he thinks he saw. Because he may not have interpreted what he saw correctly. So, and, and if he made a mistake, and Neely Fuller does make mistakes, tell him, I think you made a mistake on this one. Because it's all about getting rid of mistakes. Lots of mistakes have been made all down through the history of the world. We're supposed to be in the process, all of us, of correcting all of those mistakes. That's everybody, white and non-white. But the people who have latched on to the concept of white supremacy and took over the whole world with that have decided that they're going to glorify mistakes, that they're going to glorify everything that people do that they shouldn't do. And now they're just making a mess of everything just out of boredom because they have the power to do so. You don't do things just because you can now they want to mess with the sexes. They say male and female is not good enough. We need something better. That's what they always say. In particular, when it comes to you dark-skinned people, we'll experiment with you on this, like we experiment with you on everything. We use you to pioneer whatever our ideas are at the moment. And if we make a mistake, well, oops, no big deal, because after all, you people of color are worthless anyway. You're worth absolutely nothing. You're just in the way. We just tolerate you being here on the planet. And we mostly tolerate you because we need you to break our boredom. Because we're really bored with you. But we try to make you interesting so that we won't be bored. They're at that stage now. They're at the sophisticated stage of racism. They're not trying to get it started. They completed it a long time ago. But even a lot of white people are kind of bored with the system that they have set up. So to keep it entertaining, they keep messing with black people, experimenting with us in every way that they can. Say, oh, well, I mean, now, you know, hey, you know, uh, you black people are highly sexed. Uh, well, let's kind of spread it around. Let's have, let's have a category called scatter sex, you know. Well, what's scatter sex? Well, just a little of anything, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and something else on a Thursday afternoon, and we'll try it out on you because you all love to try something new anyway. And uh, to go along with your new tattoo, we'll have scatter sex. Well, okay, we're, we're speaking with Neely Fuller, who is the author of the United Independent Compensatory Code slash System slash Concept. I would encourage everyone to get the book. We're going to take a break, but when we come back from the break, Mr. Fuller, we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts for black people. And also, I, want, I don't, what is a scattered sex business? That sounds strange. You're going to have to clarify that for me, okay? We'll be back with Neely Fuller. This is the Kathleen Wells Show, and don't go away. Uh, welcome back, welcome back. I'm Kathleen, your host of the Kathleen Wells Show. My guest today is the author of the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. And we were just talking about scattered sex. I don't know what that means. Mr. Fuller, is that something like being poly polyamorphous? Is that what it is? Am I saying it? Poly what is scattered sex? Yeah, what is scattered sex? It's just a word. It's a word that I made up this evening. <laughs> Huh? Because so, that's what the white supremacists do. They don't care what they call things. They just have people doing things, and they they put a label on it. Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. could be, you know, like, okay, let's look at the labels that we have. We have what now? We have something called lesbian. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have something called gay. Gay used to mean happy. 
Now, I don't know what it means now. I mean, I have no, I never had anybody explain exactly why it's called gay. What, it, what is it? What part of being gay is different from being bisexual mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or or a lesbian? So you got lesbian, then you got gay. L G. What's the other? Lesbian, gay, transgender. Okay, transgender. Uh huh. Okay, now is a gay person transgender? Or can a, a transgender be gay? Can a transgender be happy? Mm-hmm. If you want to go that way. Mm-hmm. See, I'm talking about the use of words. Right, the white right. supremacists are masters of words. And they play all kinds of tricks with people's minds. Because once you get people's minds going a certain way, you can do it through words. Mm-hmm. If people will, will listen to you, that's why words are very important. Anybody who has the command of language can have people's minds bouncing around all over the place through the use of language. Mm-hmm. And that is a tr- tremendous form of control. Mm-hmm. Adolf Hitler used to say that all the time. Say, so you can tell the biggest lie in the world. All you have to do is just keep saying it. And people become drunk on the lie. And you just keep saying it. And it will become gospel. You repeat it. So according to compensatory yes. logic... And- there's reason to believe that the best language for any people to teach, learn, and use is language that does the most to produce, guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and guaranteeing that the person who needs help the most gets the most constructive help. To Republicans, that would sound like socialism. So let, now let's talk about... Oh, well, let's talk about Republicans now. <laughs> let's, let's look at words now. Words are very important. Mm-hmm. See, before we get into... What Republicans do, they simply, first of all, if you're talking about a person who is a Republican, presumably a Republican, first of all, is a person. See, we go right to the elements. What is a Republican? Well, first of all, a Republican is a person. It's not a tree. It's not a leaf on a tree. It's not a house. A Republican is a person. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get that straight, you know. Grade one, first grade. Okay, so what now you want to know, what does a Republican do that nobody else does? Otherwise, why be a Republican? Mm -hmm. See, these are the logical questions. Everything in the universe becomes clear, going to the moon or whatever, by the process of questions and answers. That's why you have to have order in a court. You can't have everybody talking at once, like a lot of people do at these conferences and whatnot. Everybody talks at once. That's chaos and confusion. That's not the way to go about doing anything in an orderly manner. You're not going to be able to get to the moon like that. You better have all your ducks in a row, or you ain't coming back. In fact, you might not get there. You better be precise, and that is one thing that black people under the system of white supremacy are taught not to be. Be precise in everything that you say and do. Raise a sharp precision. And the way you be precise, what's the process for being precise? Ask questions about everything, not just some things. Don't skip over anything. So when you say Republicans do this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is a Republican? And the best person to ask, answer that question, logically speaking, would be whom? A Republican. There you go. Will the real Republican please stand up? Stand up and be counted, sir, ma'am, if there's one in the House. We're not going to talk about Republicans without a Republican being here. And I know because I do that kind of stuff myself. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't talk about anybody who's not there. Have somebody who is supposed to be the thing that you are talking about present. Deep, see somebody, whatever it is, be it a thing or a person or an animal or what, have it there. If it's, you know, if you're talking about Fido, you at least have Fido there so people would know what Fido looks like. Mm -hmm. But Fido is a dog, I mean, you know. All right. So, well, we're when the talk Republican about stands up, you ask the Republican, what is a Republican? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I'm not a Republican, so I don't want to talk about it. 
Are you a Republican, Mr. Fuller? No, I don't even know what one is, and I put that in the word guy. See, okay. I, I, have never, I have never had anybody really define in, in a manner that was clear to me what a Republican is, what a Republican isn't. Mm-hmm. See, because everything is do's and don'ts. Mm-hmm. There are things that a Republican will do, and there are things that a Republican will not do. Mm-hmm. Based on what, Fuller? Based on logic. Otherwise, how can you have the title of Republican? Because everything that you label does things and doesn't do other things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you say that a person is uh, a Christian, that means that that person does some things and doesn't do other things. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, why well, call a person a Christian if the person just does anything? See what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anything that anybody else does, that person does it. Well, then you don't have a definition for a Christian, because that makes everybody a Christian, because everybody's doing it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, do you follow the logic? Yeah, I got you. That's so, what I mean. And everything about compensatory codification, which is what I write about, is about the use of logic. Logic came with the universe. Black people have been systematically taught not to be logical. And what is logical? What do we mean by the word logical? I mean cause and effect. Fire will burn. Water is wet. How do you know that? Trial and error. That's what, if you don't believe it, stick your finger in some fire and see if it's not different from water. Okay, so now let's talk about the do's and don'ts. And we can talk about it because we're both black people. The do's and don'ts for black people. Well, we're talking about it right now, even mm-hmm. though we might not be aware of it. Mm-hmm, <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, the do's and don'ts. Do, when you're talking about Republicans, get a Republican. Get a person who says, I am a genuine Republican. I'm no half-stepping. I'm the real thing. Okay, that, sir, you're exactly who I've been looking for. Now, what is a Republican? And now we've got nine areas of activity according to the compensatory code. Economics. Education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Now, as a Republican, sir, in those nine areas of activity, what do you do as a Republican, starting with the first area of activity in alphabetical order, economics? Mm Mm-hmm. And then after you, that person ask, answers all the questions that you ask, all of the questions that you ask pertaining to economics as a Republican, then you move to number two. And don't skip over anything until all of the questions are answered, mm-hmm. even if the answer is, I don't know. That's an answer. And, and heaven forbid, part of codif- codification is, compensatory codification is, Never help the person with the answer. That's a fatal mistake. Once you ask the question, listen to the person's answer. There's a reason for this. If that person is a white supremacist, that person will get you to help them with the answer. Mm -hmm. They're real tricky at this. And you will wind up explaining what a Republican is and what a Republican isn't, and the person hasn't said anything about what they are and what they are not, except that they were a Republican. But they got you to start describing what they are, and they will hold it against you later on because they will simply say, you know what, when you were talking to me, you asked me that question, was I a Republican? Did you start telling me what you thought a Republican is? And that's very easy to do. Don't fall into that trap because they'll hold it against you later on and they will have an excellent case because they'll say, you did all the talking. You were telling me what I was. I didn't say anything except that I was a Republican, but I didn't get a chance to describe what I, what that meant. Mm-hmm. But I tricked you into trying to describe what it meant when you start acting like you were confused, or you were confused because I was confusing you with my answers. All right? That's what a white supremacist will do. And that's whether that white supremacist calls himself a Democrat, a Republican, a Jehovah Witness, a Christian, 
a Jew, a Buddhist, a conservative, a liberal. They are masters of words. You have to be extremely careful when you're talking to them because they know how to wrap you in knots and you don't even know how you got there. And that's what we have to study. That's what I mean by listening carefully. And you want a definition for every word that they use. It slows everything down, and they will get very agitated. If the person is a white supremacist, see, they will, they will, they're not really agitated. They're faking that. But they're pretending that they're agitated because we got to move on right quick. But, and black people usually, because we are in a hurry too, all right, we'll move right along with them. They love that. No. First thing you do is slow everything down to a crawl, just like you do in a real serious court battle. Anybody who's ever been to court, that's one of the first things they notice, particularly people who like to move fast. Everything slows down. I mean, sometimes the person who has been charged with double murder goes to sleep on the stand. Why? Because it gets boring. That's why. People have probably seen that who have ever been in a court. I mean, everybody gets slumped down in their seats and all like that because, you know, they, they haven't been in that type of environment where everything just slows to a crawl. But you have to because you don't want to make any mistakes. Those mistakes are going to cost somebody. So you want to go everything, go over everything with a fine-tooth comb. That's why everything slows down. All scientific experiments are slow. When they get the car out there on the track and all like that, oh, yeah, it's speeding and all like that. But you better believe the work was done meticulously. It was done at a very slow pace. That speeding car, that car that can do 180 miles an hour, in two seconds. But they didn't do it. They didn't put that together like that. They didn't design it like that. I mean, when they were doing the designing, they didn't do it at 180 miles an hour. They did it over a period of months or years, ironing out all of the discrepancies so that at 180 miles an hour, when it hits a brick wall, the driver of that car can walk away safely. We see that happening, something similar to it in in what they call the racetracks. But those vehicles are very carefully put together, and they weren't slapped together in 15 minutes on somebody's whim on their way to a picnic. Someone did that in a very methodical, very systematic, very painstaking, you might say, manner. So, if you're going to get rid of racism, you have to learn to think that way, in an orderly, meticulous manner. Black people like to jump up and down and shout, do a whole lot of of high-fiving and and and, and hand-clapping and whatnot when they're trying to solve a problem. Uh, Our culture... I know where it comes from, but it doesn't work. Where does it come from? In trying from? to get rid of white supremacy. It does not work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we're talking with Neely Fuller, who's the author of the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. He says black people need to slow down and be more precise and meticulous and methodical. That words are tools, and the use the, the, the reason we use words is to, is to gain peace, harmony, and justice. Am I paraphrasing you correctly, Mr. Fuller? Yes. Words are nothing but tools. See what I mean? Just like a pair of pliers or a saw. Mm -hmm. And you want to pick your words carefully to do the tool, to do the job that the tool is supposed to do. You don't pick up a pair of pliers and then try to saw wood. It doesn't work. A pair of pliers is not made for that. And words are the same way. You want to look in the toolbox and choose the word that will work best. Now, you can eventually probably get the tree down with a pair of pliers, but it might take you a thousand years or so, you know, or whatever. But it's not going to be as efficient as a chainsaw that's lying right next to it. Why not pick up 
the word that will do what you want done in the most efficient manner. Because words are tools. Tools for what? Getting a job done. And the job is to promote justice and peace. Yes, that's exactly. the ultimate. That's the ultimate job. I that's mean, and we'll do that by establishing something, presumably, through uh, the agency of universal man and universal woman. That's the description I give to those two people, those qualities of people. Those people haven't been invented yet. We have to invent those people. We should be trying to evolve into universal man and universal woman. Why? Logically speaking. Because we're in a universe. And that's the way we should think. This thing about having a strong black community, that's shallow thinking. It really is. Why is it shallow thinking? Because in order to have a strong black community, you, you're assuming that you'll have white supremacy forever. That's the logical assumption. What do you need a strong black community for except to fight against something? And you'll be fighting against white supremacy. And if you're still fighting against white supremacy, it means it'll be here forever if that's what you're going to be doing, if that's your goal. So we want to go beyond that. We want to take those leaps and bounds. And that will eliminate the system of white supremacy anyway. Because if you're functioning as universal man and universal woman, that means that you function with maximum constructive ability everywhere you go as individual persons. That's why I call the book the United Independent Compensatory Code, because okay, it's addressed gonna, to the individual. We're going to take a break, but when we come back from the break, Mr. Fuller, we're going to talk about universal man and universal woman. How do we get there? That's the question. We're talking with Neely Fuller, who is the author of the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept. Pick it up. This is the Kathleen Wells Show. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Kathleen with the Kathleen Wells Show. My guest today is Neely Fuller, Jr., who is the author of the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. It's a guidebook. It's a word book. It gives us the definitions, and we want word, We want to have the proper usage of words. We want to be able to embrace words, to use them constructively towards justice and peace. So, Mr. Fuller, I want to ask you, when you talk about universal man and universal woman, what are you talking about? Well, I mentioned them briefly in the basic textbook. Now, apparently, you... You have the word guide in front of you, but mm-hmm. there's a basic textbook uh, that comes before the word guide. I mean, that divided or segmented into nine areas of activity, mm-hmm. and it's about the do's and don'ts that are addressed to individual people in dealing with racism. But the word guide that you have is an addition to the basic book, and your question was about universal man and universal woman. Now, exactly. they are yet to be produced. See, in order for people to progress, they first have to have a vision. A vision of what? Of a goal. G-O-A-L. In other words, something to reach for. I mean, everybody likes to have something to look for, but you want to have something to look for that makes sense. Particularly in a world that is chaotic as it is now. You don't want to reach for another chaotic world. And the white supremacists think like that. They show that in a lot of the movies, those who participate in movie making. Uh, not not all white people and whatnot, but I mean, there are some white people who are racist, who are associated with movie making. And what do they do when they make movies? They make movies about another world that exists somewhere out there. Mm-hmm. But... In this other world, what do they depict the people doing? Fighting. And they make video games about this fighting on some other planet, even before they get there. So they're already saying what their plans are. They're not going there to welcome anybody. In fact, the racist mind is, hey, we can't find any dark people here. Let's go somewhere else till we find some. Because that's what we're here for. That's why we're searching the universe. Trying to see if there are some more people out there, particularly people of color, purple people or whatever, as long as they got some color, so we can mess with them. They show that right on their screens, right there in front of your eyes. These are plans for the future. It's not just entertainment. 
the white supremacists entertain themselves by planning their next move. They don't do anything that doesn't have anything to do with giving strength to the system of white supremacy. So what we want is a universal man and a universal woman who work to do constructive things. That's what they are about. So that I would say in another, just I would like to say it in 10 years, when someone sees a, a black person walk into the room, they say, oh, I can tell by the way that that person, even, even the way that they talk to people when they came in here just five minutes ago already, you know that's the person that's on their, his way to being a universal man. But that's the lady over there. That lady over there, see that lady over there? That lady is on her way to being a universal woman. I can tell by her manner. I can tell by the way she goes about doing things, the way she talks to people. She's always courteous. Even when people are very hostile toward her, she's courteous. I mean, she's just as rigid about that as anything that you'll ever want to see. She's not going to deviate, not one inch. She doesn't get rattled by, by people, you know, acting in a hostile manner, uh, in a, uh, saying derogatory things, anything like that. She, she's all about being serious about serious things, and at the same time being relaxed. Not like a robot. She's not a robot. She's not some type of monstrosity. You can tell that she has a, a real humane quality about her. And well, what is it? What are you talking about? Just watch her. She's different. She's different from any of us, black or white. She, she's on that road to being universal. That's what I mean. That mysterious quality that hasn't come into any of us. And how will we get there? By always trying to do the most constructive thing day by day in everything that we do and say. Stop and think. Means slowing down a little bit. Stop and think. What's the most constructive thing for me to say here today on the job when that lady who usually comes in here cursing and screaming, what's the most constructive thing that he or she can do in response? That's the person that's on their way to becoming the universal man or the universal woman. That person who reacts in the most constructive manner in everything that's going on, regardless of what's happening, what everybody else is doing, regardless of what is popular for the moment, regardless of the latest fad that people, particularly too many black people, have a habit of jumping on to without even looking. Just whatever comes down the pike, well, whatever. You know, come day, God, go day, God send Sunday if you want to. I mean, I'll just jump on board whatever anybody's throwing at me. That's the definition of a person who has been completely devastated. <laughs> All right. That's what black, and that's where black people are. We are devastated people. We're mm -hmm. not in the process of becoming devastated. Mm -hmm. We have been devastated mm -hmm. in a devastated condition. Mm -hmm. But we can evolve out of that. But how do you evolve out of anything? First of all, you have to have some kind of criteria. Otherwise, you don't know what you're doing or why you're doing it. But we should, we should be taking on the characteristics. One thing, what would be one of the first characteristics of a universal man and a universal woman? Always go for the truth. Always be able to acknowledge the truth. Even when people are saying things about you, if you know that they are true, be willing to stand up and say, that what you're saying about me is true. What you're saying about me is something that shouldn't be true. But it is true. And I will acknowledge that. And that thing that you say about me is a flaw. Because we all have them. And you have found one of mine. So I will work on that flaw. That is the making of a universal man and or a universal woman. Yeah, well, you know... Because, it was, see, the wait. white supremacists won't admit to anything. Yeah. Everything they do is so beautiful and wonderful. And perfect. But the thing yes, of it is, it requires... See, because they say we have already arrived. We're not evolving into nothing. Right. See what I mean? But see, black people shouldn't take that position. We should say we're standing on zero. We are evolving from zero to universal man and universal woman. Because right now, we are absolutely nothing. But everything of value comes from nothing. You, you know, That's but to, I hear what universe. you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But to recognize truth in oneself 
in one's character requires some enlightenment and self-reflection. And if you are suffering from a mental or psychological debility, inability to see what disability is the word I'm looking for, you cannot self-reflect. You don't know true from false. Absolutely. So what you do is search for results. So you watch what people do. You know, what, regardless of how small it is or how large it is, like I said, I started this program by saying what? Everything, including walking across a room and changing a chair, changing from one chair to another. That's all you did. You got out of one chair, walked across the hotel lobby, and sat in another chair. Now, by doing that one act, you did something that was constructive or non-constructive. The effect of what you did is going to have an effect of being constructive or non-constructive, and all you did was change shares. But now it might not be noticeable, but that's the effect that it's going to have, because everything in the universe is constructive or non-constructive. And once we latch on to that, and don't deviate from it for any reason, regardless of our personal feelings. And black people have, have all kinds of deep-seated feelings. But, see, we have to use our feelings to lead us to logic, which is what we have not done. We just go by our feelings. Sometimes we even brag about it. Well, that's not how I feel about it. They say, yeah, but, uh, uh, Henry, this is, this is the only way it will work. Yeah, but I don't feel that way about it. Well, Henry, you can't go into the house. I mean, the house is on fire. Yeah, but I don't feel like I, I, I feel like I should go to bed. I'm ready to go to bed. I'm going back into the house. See, we can't continue that kind of logic. We can't continue that kind of logic. All uh, what I call our feelings. We brag about our feelings. Black people used to call it what? Soul. All right. But that's basically what it is. But soul and feelings and emotions have to be attached to logic. Otherwise, it's chaotic. And there's That's the why we are in a state of chaos all the time, and we don't want know, understand why we are there. We're in a state of chaos. There's, our, there's the music, Neely Fuller. Thank you for joining me. Time goes by so fast. Neely Fuller is the author of the United Independent Compensatory Code, which also has a workbook. I encourage you to get it. Thank you, Neely Fuller. We'll have you on again real soon, okay? Yes, go to ProduceJustice.com to get Pro the book. ProduceJustice.com. ProduceJustice.com to get his book. Thank you, Neely Fuller. We'll have you on again soon. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, bye-bye.